batch normalization is an advancement which has recently been proposed for stable learning in deep networks as we discussed in earlier lectures there is significant problem in stable convergence in deep networks much of this problem is caused by the vanishing and exploding gradient problems and the different variance in the activations of different features in various layers batch normalization is a way to address this issue by adding an additional batch normalization layer between every two layers of the neural network in this video we will discuss the basics of batch normalization in order to motivate batch normalization we will revisit the vanishing and exploding gradient problems which we discussed in an earlier lecture so here we have shown an example we have repeated the example from the earlier lecture in which we have a neural network with one node per layer in this case the forward propagation it multiplicatively depends on each weight and activation function evaluation the key point is that in the backward propagation the partial derivative gets multiplied by the weights and uh, the active activation function derivatives so unless the product of the weight and the activation function uh, derivative is exactly one the gradients will i will either tend to increase or they will tend to decrease this is partially caused by the fact that the activations in different layers have different variances the variances of the activations in different layers they either tend to increase or they tend to decrease so uh, let us again revisit the uh, example that we have used in several lectures this is the example of the bowl where we show two different loss functions the loss function on the left is a circular bowl its uh, l is equal to x square plus y square where the loss function on the right is an elliptical bowl where l is equal to x square plus 4y square so you can see that uh, in the uh, in, in in the case of the loss function on the right if you have varying scale of different parameters it will cause bouncing in the gradient descent we discussed this in detail in an earlier lecture and typically what happens is that if there is varying scale of the different features it causes varying scale of the parameters in fact the reason that we perform normalization of the inputs is in order to avoid the varying scale of the features batch normalization generalizes the concept of normalizing only the input features it normalizes not only the input features but also the features in each layer so this principle of normalization of the input features is carried through to all layers to ensure more stable behavior stable behavior and faster convergence of the underlying algorithm uh, another way of viewing the problem uh, viewing why batch normalization helps is that if you can view the input to each layer as a shifting data set of hidden activations one can see why a shifting input causes problems during training so uh, so, so so there are two problems that are caused by the fact that the input to each hidden layer shifts uh, over different iterations one is that convergence becomes slower and the second is that the final result may not generalize very well because of the unstable inputs batch normalization what it does is that it ensures somewhat more stable inputs to each layer which ensures more stable convergence so the solution to uh, all of these problems is that of batch normalization where we add an additional batch normalization node uh, in each layer to ensure that uh, the variances of the outputs of each layer uh, are similar so now, now now this batch normalization node there's something very unusual about it uh, uh, as we all know the most of the neural network functions they are defined on a point wise basis so basically i if i give you a data point there is a unique way to compute the output however the batch normalization node it's an operation that depends on the specific mini batch being considered so the the specific operation which is performed on a particular training or test instance actually on a training instance only we'll discuss the case of test instances later on on a particular tra training instance depends on the batch being considered 
so uh, and 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 so here you can see that this bash normalization i have shown it as a node like any other operation in neural network i have defined a bn node which is your bash normalization node now there are two ways in which you can add bash normalization to each layer one is you can do what is called post activation normalization normalization so in post activation normalization after the activation function is applied we apply the normalization the other is what is called pre activation normalization where after applying the linear layer you perform the norm normalization and then you apply the activation function to it so uh, in the original bash normalization paper it has been recommended to perform pre activation normalization uh, and uh, note that these bash normalization nodes they contain additional uh, learnable parameters so so they don't just perform uh, just normalization they have additional learnable parameters so so that there is, so so certain aspects of normalization can also be learned so here you can see on the right the figure on the right the input to the bash normalization node is vi which is output by the linear layer and the output uh, is ai so now we are going to uh, see how these uh, vi's and ai's are created so now uh, we assume that the ith unit contains two parameters beta i and gamma i that need to be learned now there are four primary operations during batch normalization Uh, now note that some of these operations are also performed when you perform the normalization of the input features now for for each batch of m instances you compute a batch mean which is basically the mean of all the inputs note that here each vi uh, on on in the figure on the right each vi is input to a batch normalization node now here we have given a superscript as well to vi to ensure the index over the batch so you can see you have vi r this r can vary from 1 to m because you have a batch of m instances so you compute the mean over the batch of m instances then you also compute the variance in us in the same way once you have computed the mean you compute the variance over the batch of m instances then you normalize the batch of so this is just like you do for input features but in input features you do it over the whole data set here you are doing it over a batch Uh, vi r minus mu i divided by sigma i so this is your normalized this v hat i r that's your normalized batch instance now uh, for input feature this is where you stop you just use these normalized values but in batch normal you have additional learnable parameters beta i and gamma i so the final output ai r so i i go back to the slide where you can see on the right what's coming out of the batch is ai so here i have added a superscript to the ai that's ai r that's given by gamma i vi hat r plus beta i so the question is why do we need beta i and gamma i there are two reasons for this one is that if you don't use these additional learnable parameters the mean of all the activation will be zero and in fact most of the activation will be concentrated around zero statistically so what is going to happen is that uh, the you, you will uh, so for example if you use a tanf function you will be operating in a near linear regime uh, and and in general in general even if you don't use a tanf function even with other function you want Uh, the uh, to to decide you want neural network to be able to decide which regime how much non linearity from the activation function to use because after all as we discussed in one of the earlier lectures one of the key ways in which deep networks learn and increase their capacity uh, is by having the right level of linear non linearity in each layer so in some sense these gamma i and beta i provide the ability for each layer and each node to decide how much non linearity they want So, uh, so so now once we have set up so 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 essentially now uh, uh, what we are given here what are the set of operations performed for each batch normalization no node so so these operations are just like any other node in the network now we have batch normalization operations so since it, you can treat the bn node like any other node we we can just back propagate through this node the main difference is that uh, when you back propagate you have to be careful that now you are normalizing over a batch so the back propagation uh, equation cannot be performed just over a single instance it has to use uh, these equations uh that that i discussed in the slide uh, which shows how the activation are computed over the batch so it will use the whole batch in order to perform the back propagation and and even the gradients of beta i and gamma i which are the learnable parameters they can be computed during back propagation and the detailed derivation of this is given in the book now uh, 
uh, there are some issues in inference. Uh, one question arises is that uh, in batch normalization, the activation for a particular input, it depends on some transformation parameter, which are mu i and sigma i. The question is that these mu i and sigma i, they depend on a specific batch during training time. Uh, and how should one compute them during testing when a single test instance is available? Because we need th these uh, means and these standard deviations in order to uh, perform the activations through the BN node. Because the BN nodes are still present in neural network even during testing. And we need a way because during testing we only have a single test instance. We no longer have a batch. So uh, at inference, what you do is there are two, there are several ways in which uh, you can do this. One, this is the simplest possible way to do it is that you can compute the mean and standard deviation over the entire population of training data. You can run the entire training data through the network and compute the mean and standard deviation and then use these as the uh, constants during testing time. The other thing that you can do is that you can maintain exponentially weighted averages during training and then you can use uh, these values during inference. Now, uh, the batch normalization has one other interesting effect is that it acts as a regularizer. Why, why does batch normalization also act as a regularizer? Uh, one point is that the same data point can cause somewhat different updates depending on which batch it is included. Because uh, as you remember, you can see that uh, your uh, forward activations are going to depend on these mean and standard deviation, which are specific to the batch at hand. So obviously, uh, your output is going to be specific to the batch at hand, and similarly, the back propagated derivatives are also going to be specific to the batch at hand. So. Um, uh, you know, you, you can view this effect of the, that uh, that there are somewhat different updates depending on which batch it is, it is included as a kind of noise added to the update process. And as we'll see in a later lecture, regularization, uh, for example, penalty-based regularization is also equivalent to adding noise to data. In fact, many forms of regularization explicitly add noise uh, to either the inputs or the updates uh, or even the hidden layer. And... Um, uh, but uh, one point is that this type of regularization is relatively mild. You cannot really use it as a primary regularizer. Nevertheless, it does help in terms of improving the generalization uh, that you learn from the batch normalized layer. Uh, 